it's a very pessimistic way of thinking, but I can't help but earnestly <laughs> express that um, there is so much talent and there's so many people who are insanely talented, super hardworking, like diligently working on their craft and their skill and their art and have the drive. Hi, Lauren. How are you? I'm good. How are you doing? Um, amazing. My name is Adam, and this podcast is about you and your journey in music, and we'll talk about the, the new EP you just released. I'm excited. Thank you for having me. Of course. Um, I read, you're, are you originally from Baltimore? Is that what I saw? Yep. Okay. Born and raised in Baltimore? Um, I spent some time in the city when I was younger and then went back in my teen years and then went back in my early 20s, but I, I also spent some time in... Um, growing up in old Ellicott city, went to high school there. It's in Howard County. It's like 20 minutes from Baltimore. Okay. Same vicinity. Sorry. I'm, yeah, I'm from Southern vicinity. California. And then I'm, I recently moved to Nashville about a year ago. So I don't know <laughs> the area. I've made so many friends in Nashville. Um, really? Instagram, including Sierra Farrell, who I'm obsessed with. Um, I don't know her, but um, I love, I love Nashville. Um, I'll check her out. Sierra Farrell. Yeah. Yeah, you're one more friend. You're one more reason why I need to to do a, a proper visit. You yeah. should. It's it's yeah. so cool here. Like I said, I was born and raised in San Diego and never knew anything. I lived in San Francisco for a while, but never knew anything aside besides California and came here and I just fell in love. So uh, it's great. I think I'm afraid of falling in love with Nashville. <laughs> <laughs> it's not hard to do. Like, to be <laughs> I've, lost you're two, I've lost two of my uh, uh, Angelino friends there. They're just oh, like, okay. Know. They can't. Were they in LA with you? Are you in LA now? Okay, I, yeah. yeah, yeah. I know. There's a lot of us Californians taking the the trip out here. So, yeah, yeah. But um, so Baltimore. What was it like growing up there? Sorry to go off kind of a um, tangent on the side there. Um, it was a. I, I, it's what I knew. Yeah. Okay. I I feel like going back now. It's very exciting. I feel like um the millennials are really killing it. Um, there's like, there's so many good, um, good new shops and food, um, like food places and food swaps. And, and there's just a lot going on. Um, mm -hmm. Our generations are really bringing it to life. There's also just been like so much building, like the Pendry and Bells Point and like all the cleanup that's happened there. Um, but Baltimore as a city, I don't know. I loved it. Um, it it's home. Uh, mm -hmm. I love 89.7 WTMD. We've got good, you know, good, a good music base. Um, yeah, there's, there's a lot to do. Also just Maryland in general, like mm -hmm. you've got rural suburbs, you've got the woods, you've got hiking and then it's an, there's an ocean right there. Yeah. You got a lot and you're close to stuff. I mean, yeah, to and some we're close to DC. So like, if you you're right, tired, I had my years where like, it's funny because I like had a fake when I was really young. And so I went mm -hmm. out in Baltimore like all the time. And by the time I was 21, I was like over Baltimore. And then <laughs> like, I've been drinking here for years. <laughs> yeah. And I'm, like, I'm going to DC and, and spent a lot of years going to shows down there. And it's, they're two different vibes, but they're 45 minutes apart. So it's exciting. Um, you're also yeah, that's awesome. Philly. Yeah. I, I know it's, it's so, it's so crazy to me to think that because just you're in LA now and you know, like, from San Diego, when I moved to San Francisco, it would take you like nine hours or eight hours to drive there. And here, I can drive from Tennessee to like the mission, or I can drive to like the Great Lakes in eight hours. It's exactly. just so bizarre how many states you can kind of cut through and so many cities you can reach in such a short amount of time if you're out on the East Coast, especially in, in Baltimore area. Exactly. I have friends that like live in San, or friends that live here now in Los Angeles and they're from like the Bay area in San Francisco. Yeah. And I'm like, Oh, so it's not that different. And they're like, it's completely different, but I'm like, yeah, you're like, yeah. it's yeah, it's totally different. It's so weird. Yeah. Cause even kids that like lived in the burbs, like, and never spent any time in Baltimore, they still like know a little bit about it because it was like a 20, 30 minute drive or like, you know, mm -hmm. yeah, there's such a difference between like, uh southern california like beaches and everything compared to like the bay and it's Very just much. yeah totally different vibe but um wow so was there a pretty cool music scene where, when you were growing up like i mean you talked about going to shows in in dc area but in baltimore would you go and 
Yeah, I mean, I the bulk of um, I went to a lot of shows. Um, the the main the the main time in my life where I went to the most shows was like fourteen to seventeen in the screamo emo era. Oh, that those that was my jam. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> um, I spent a lot of time at Auto Bar. Um, okay. Um, and there was a great emo screamo scene there too. I mean, you had a lot of great I bands mean, that had. I yeah. feel like the East Coast invented it. Like, no, I, for sure. Even like back to like the comparison, like having friends out here who are like my age or like in the surrounding years, I, I'm like, you know, I'll be like Silverstein, Bayside, for sauce, and they're just like, it wasn't really out here. Like it wasn't. It wasn't as big, yeah. As, it, it wasn't as prevalent, I guess. But right. I mean, you even had Taking Back Sunday and Brand New and Saves a Day and all those bands were out from that era, uh, East Coast. Yeah. And those were, they would do oh, okay in San Diego, but when the, they were coming up, I remember seeing them at clubs that held like 100 people. Yeah. And now, you know, those bands are like the headliners of these festivals and stuff. <laughs> yeah, which I'm so happy about. It's cool to see. It's cool to see that uh, resurgence in that. But even you had the hardcore scenes out in D.C. and Boston area. I mean, East Coast, at least. But yeah. Um, what about music? How did you get into music? Do you have a musical household, creative oh, household? Um, my parents love music. My mom was like more into top 40s radio. She loves disco. Oh, cool. And Motown. My dad loves Motown. My dad loves like American 60s, 70s classic rock. My stepmom, same. She also like was into kind of the harder radio rock. Um, that was, you know, like Lincoln Park and POD and stuff. Um, and she also loved country. It's, I got a lot, I got a lot of influences, but I, I don't know. I, I asked for a guitar when I was like 10. Mm -hmm. I didn't have anyone that like played one. I was just like, that seems cool. Um, and my mom got me one, my Yamaha, my friends are into my bed. Um, like, oh, you still have the first one. Oh my God. Absolutely. It's like, same here. I'm not, I not even good at guitar, but I just kept my first one. <laughs> yeah, well, you have to. It's like a little, I mean, you don't like for me, it's definitely a trophy like that guitar. Like, so it, it, it was my, it was my therapist. It was my best friend. I mean, it sounds cliche, but it's just so true. I mean, um, it kept me alive. I was like, um, I had a lot of suicidal um, bouts when I was a teenager mm -hmm. and just playing guitar. That's when I started writing when I was like 13. And um, I continued to write um, throughout my teenage years and then like into my early 20s. And then it wasn't until I was like 21 or 23 that I shared some songs with some friends and it be kind of it be it kind of became like a party trick oh okay and then I played like some open mic nights and I played like one or two like talent shows like in school like one in high school or whatever um, which I always find fascinating that you just because you mentioned how you weren't showing your songs to people until you're in your 20s uh, but then you do a high school talent show which is in front of all of your peers that you have to like see every day for the next however long, you know, if you did like totally. an open mic, you would never probably see any of those people ever again. Totally. It's interesting, right? I think yeah. what would happen, I remember what it was feeling like for me, it would kind of be like this like thing that would come up and choke me. Like you have to do something. I'm like, okay, okay, okay. And then I'd sign up and I'd do something and I'd follow through. And right before I go on, I'd be like so nervous. And I'd be like, I'm never fucking doing this again. Why did I do this? This is the worst idea ever. And then I would do it. And then every single time it got a little less and a little less that. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Yeah. Were you playing your own song or just cover song? Like at least the, the talent I'm playing show. my own songs, but eventually when I like wanted to, something clicked when I was like 23 and I wanted to take it more seriously. Mm -hmm. And um, I had a boyfriend who was super supportive and also very musically inclined and so we started a band and we did um we played like house some house shows mm -hmm. and uh I also was a bit more interested in it than he was and so he was like you know why don't you do open mic nights at restaurants and I played a couple and so you know those are like 
we're gonna pay you <laughs> in a right. meal and two beers and, you know, <laughs> yeah. here's a drink minutes. ticket and yeah. uh, so like, you get a three grilled hours. cheese sandwich <laughs> exactly and there's like three hours to fill you get they're like at least there's three 45 minute sets do whatever you want to and so I would like I found a list I, I save everything I'm very like organized too but I found like a set list from men it's like and I'd litter my like the covers with the originals and just kind of mix it up but like yeah. that's cool what were some of those covers do you remember <laughs> like, now i'm curious um alanis morissette oh um, good that's a hard one too to sing um, i mean you have a, you've got a killer voice but um I, just to, to take that one on it's um, awesome yeah it was like uh, you already won me over um i had um all I can say is the life is pretty plain. Um, uh, no Rain by um, some Elliot Smith. Um, I had some Beatles in there. I had Going to California in there. Um, it was precious. It was so cute. I had that is some, so cool. Um, I had some, uh, what's her name? Hilary Duff in there. I learned it because of this little girl that I babysat like years prior and then she was like 20 something or 19 like coming to like my shows and then I'd be like it's for her like that was on there and I was like whoa I completely forgot that I even learned it because of her yeah. Yeah, <laughs> that's exactly. awesome yeah. <laughs> um were you doing those shows was that when you were still living on the east coast yeah I did okay. um and they were far and few but they they were Im imperative to where I am now like it's interesting like my I feel like I I wasn't like I wasn't a musician on the east coast I went to hair school right after high school oh um, you did so you thought yeah. you're gonna be a hairstyle or uh, yeah I do was. that I oh was, you were a hairstylist I was successfully for like eight years and wow oh wedding business I did updos for weddings damn um, and I loved it and I miss it um, I miss it because I miss the energy and I, I love taking care of people and I love the artistic part of it and I love the brides and I like the intensity. It works for me. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah. I feel like that was a lot, a lot of people that I knew that were musicians or in like that world, it went that route too, which I always find found fascinating. Isn't that interesting? We become yeah. like, we're also like tattoo artists or musicians or, or right or tattoo artists. yeah or hairstylist and the yeah, hairstylist like... and the tattoo artists mar get, get married like they, yeah <laughs> right <laughs> we're also like those two musicians absolutely I remember, right. uh paul mitchell school was like so popular in san diego like so many people yeah. went there yeah there was paul mitchell schools all over too i almost went to one uh my 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 hair school in Glen Burnie, maryland it transferred from a paul mitchell school to a redkin school and i was like one month one of nine there and we had to learn both um both color lines so interesting so you did that for a while well, yeah what took you uh, then it so when did it change where you stopped doing the hair and is that what took you to los angeles like tell me where you were at when that all kind of happened the the yearning was slow um uh like i said i was having success in doing hair and i'm a very practical person and i was also very much so in love with the craft. So mm -hmm. it took me a second to, you know, throw that, you know, kind of truly stop it, like end it, throw it away. Um, but I would just kind of dip my foot in. And I think the real moment of like, hey, you can take this, like put, put, get both feet out of that, um, put both feet into this new endeavor mm -hmm. um, was when I had a friend who was a musician and he had like a YouTube um following and he he and I did like a, a duet together and this was like 2013 it got like like a million views which was like pretty impressive at the time it's still and, pretty impressive <laughs> yeah I listen I think so too but um but anywho um I had some managers like email me from that video and um and I worked with some like I I, I trial period from people like in New York and then I really fell um felt so deeply connected with this uh, one woman who was based out here her name was Diane Copeland and she was my first manager and she's a dear friend of mine to this day um but yeah she she was like hey come out here and um I did writing sessions with Lauren Christie and Linda Perry and 
Wow. Diana and I did really fun work together, really helped me realize who, what, how I, there's so many different ways to do the, to be a, a musician. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm so grateful for that. But yeah, she, her, her calling me out here, I fell in love with LA because as you know, LA is, she's magic. Yeah. yeah. And you, is that when you put out that, your first EP, the self-titled yeah. EP? Yeah. Yeah, so I wrote I, I wrote those songs um, while I was still living in Baltimore. I was living in Fells Point right before I moved out here, and um, yeah, just came out here and was kind of like who I am, like a dog with a bone with everything. And was just mm-hmm. like I need to find a producer. Um, we record this. I moved out here January twenty fifteen, and found a producer shortly thereafter. We recorded it in June, and I. Um, had the physical copies and a show that November, like on my birthday. And I, wow. I put it online like January or February of 2016, like the next year. Okay. Yeah, and when, was, oh. from there, was it like, okay, I have the EP out, like I'm, you know, I'm an artist, let's do the tour and this, like, like how did, like, what was the kind of the next everything. move? I wanted okay. everything. Yeah. I wanted everything. Um, and at that show, um, at like the EP release show, I was already starting to write like harder stuff. Like the EP is very folk and it's, mm-hmm. I think it's adorable. It's like, I, I love like, I, I think that not trying to hide like where we've begun is a great step in the direction of just like, um, I don't know, just acknowledging that it's not my it's not work that I would put out today is what I'm saying but right you have to um, show where you started to kind of to the progression of what you've been doing now right totally and so because it wasn't um because I had kind of surpassed um I, my like music evolution I was doing like cartwheels in front of like that was out and I was already like at the show that of its release I was already doing of its physical release um I was already playing and writing like harder rock songs and playing with a mm-hmm. band. So that EP didn't really serve me well in that way. Um, I was kind of still like perpetually getting opening slots as like the- The, the, the folky song. artist. Okay, yeah. mm-hmm. sure. Um, and it wasn't until, um, you know, it happened, still happened pretty quickly. It was like that summer um, at that show, I found a guitarist who I like, really fell in love with his name's Eduardo Rivera I loved the way he played um and we wrote a lot of songs together we ended up writing my two albums together wow and we started releasing stuff like that that um maybe like that summer or that fall it all blends together but right that, that's when things really started to fall in place I I found um, um I found a team that really fit the following year I got um, like a booking agent and I got my first label deal in 2017 and it's um it's been a nice journey sure wow and like you know having all those things kind of happen at at that point um that must be like how validating just knowing that where you started and doing those open mics and kind of starting the spot you did and then to get to LA and then have it actually happen because so many people moved to LA with this you know dream of doing that and it doesn't work out a lot of the time yeah I think um it's a it's a very pessimistic way of thinking, but I can't help but earnestly <laughs> express that um there is so much talent and there's so many people who are insanely talented, super hardworking, like diligently working on their craft and their skill and their art. Um and have the drive and sometimes that just doesn't matter i i i'm I'm learning um especially since the pandemic all the Mm -hmm. all the 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 late the late you know um, booking agencies and everyone getting pared down and all the layoffs within the um industry of the Mm -hmm. movers and the shakers there's so much good art right now and i'm feeling like there's there's not um that many it, it's not it's not equivalent to the amount of people who can like sign you it's um it's very um, 
it's not something to be taken lightly. There's such, there's so much good art. It's validating is a word, but for sure, absolutely. But also when that's not happening, um, let me think. I try not to use that as a criteria for validation. Got it. Because of what I just said. Like I yeah. have friends where their music has touched me and I'm, and, and, they just had someone to put them on a higher platform. Mm -hmm. It would just be like, bah, 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 bah. right, right. It just takes one person to kind of like yeah. pluck you up, right? I mean, a Spotify placement could be the difference between any, you know, they can just change your life by being like, oh, I like this song. Okay, I'm going to put Lauren's song on this playlist that has X million followers and now it's going to go. <laughs> you know what it's I mean? Really life changing. And I've been able to, um, uh, to have those, some of those experiences and really like, revel in my like um in 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 my pride of my hard work and my talent and you have to hold you have to be there and you have to celebrate all of the wins mm -hmm. they don't happen like you know putting a song out or putting an album out and not getting uh the kind of validation from the industry that you were hoping it's it also has to be like okay you know, like do i love my message yeah i'm gonna right it. Yeah, I love that. No, I know. I love that because there are so many times where you could be like, oh, this is the best thing I ever did. And it, it might not land as well as something else that you had done that maybe didn't mean, not that it didn't mean a lot, but not to but the, yeah. you know, yeah, exactly. I hear what you're saying, that too. So uh, I, it's, yeah, it's interesting, especially now with the internet and anyone can record a song with a, a I know, $50 mic and a laptop. It's like, the, everyone can, you know, the, it's just so so different now than it than yeah. it even was like two three years ago. Yeah, and there's pros, there's there's pros and cons to that too. It's yeah, because now it's just like oversaturated market with people that don't know what the hell they're totally. doing. <laughs> and then also like the person who like wants so badly, like I think about thirteen year old Lauren who wanted so badly to like have the dream of being a musician, but honestly, just because there was such a lack of representation. I mean, don't get me wrong, I still to this day some lyrics from those emo uh, bands they are they're in my heart and they're writing tools for me and they're who i am but we had Haley. That's yeah we right had Haley. we had the distillers we yeah had yeah sounds. distillers you had we gwen had metric. oh metric yeah. yeah i know and remember the sounds oh the sounds yes uh the you Ditto. had uh what was the other one wait no it wasn't a lot. Yeah, I'm trying to think. I had one, but I now just spaced. Yeah. Had Tegan and Sarah. We had Tegan and Sarah. Uh, Girl in a coma. We mm -hmm. had like some. We had some, but. Yeah, but not to the extent. Yeah, not to the yeah. level that. You know. Yeah, and they weren't getting like the the hot topic, um, the hot topic success. Like I couldn't buy their t-shirts or their vinyl at Hot Topic. It was just very male dominated. When I went to Warp Tour, it was like. It's just men everywhere, which is <laughs> right. fine, which is fine. I mean, we survived, I guess, but it is a part of my condition. It, you know, it was a part of my conditioning. So back on like the, the pro to everything being very accessible now, I think if 13-year-old um, uh, Lauren just kind of was like, hey, here's some tools that you could use. Like, you know, I would have been like, oh, this microphone or this, or I can just with my, with a laptop and I don't have to go to the computer lab at my high school. Maybe it would have like helped me see it in myself a little sooner. I was very programmed to be like a monkey see, monkey do. Okay, well, oh, yeah, you can't do. Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. You didn't have uh, someone else doing it that you could be like, okay, this person's doing it, so I could definitely do this. Yes, representation is so so very important. It's it hasn't. Um, as I've gotten older, I've realized that the way that I used to see it through my eyes in those years um there's a term it's called shadow artist oh um, i stole it from the book um the artist way which is just a nice little touchstone for for writer's block and um, for all people who think they don't have a creative bone in their body because we're all creative beings um but a shadow artist is kind of like my definition is um like i was doing all the musicians hair like commandeering like they all came to me and it was so much fun for their music videos for just their 
every six weeks they're colored before this band went on tour everyone's coming to mama mm -hmm. i was always so close i was dating the musician <laughs> and i just thought i could you know that's a sure. shadow yeah <laughs> okay <laughs> yeah that's and interesting I, I feel like it's kind of now the producer is the person like i feel like women are getting the shade over that like i was talking to somebody the other day like she was a dj and and i just feel like i have a mac computer right here with like garage band on it so i can just be like i'm a producer i you know i can drop a loop and then it, like w when it comes to women like it's harder for them to come forward and be like yeah i'm a producer but i feel like guys could just be like just bullshit something i don't know maybe <laughs> i just I found know, that i know a bunch of artists that could speak to that that are yeah uh, that are female and femme representing that would um yeah could could really school us both in the woes oh yeah for sure i'm sure um you put out a, a record of all doors covers were you a big doors fan oh yeah huge was that like one of your favorites growing up or just later in down <laughs> yeah. line like i mean to, for, to put a whole record out yeah for his birthday say. i mean nonetheless yeah um, <laughs> Yeah, totally. It's interesting, right? Because like, you don't know me. So you see what I put out. And it's like, we have to we gather this information. And that is me. Totally. Mm -hmm. Love the doors. Um, when I when I decided that um, I also put out uh, an Elliot Smith tribute album too. Yeah, I did listen to that, which I love. I think that's so cool. Um, thank you. He doesn't get enough respect. Or I don't think he, he he was never put on the pedestal that I think a lot of, you know, artist that he was better than or he did an s the d of uh shaking of uh, mixing his art with with commerce he was that's just true fully, he just did it yeah for sure um i think the most one of the most cringiest moments on television is uh when he performed um uh, miss misery the um the nodding uh, i'm not good with movies but whatever movie it was in it was nick was it nodding um I can't remember. I know what you're talking about, but I can't remember I'm, either off the top I, of my head. It was so dark when he said Matt Damon is nodding for whatever it was. It, it brought him commercial success and so mm -hmm. he earned it at like an MTV Music Awards. And it was just so also reading like the, the, the reading the literature around it and watching like the rock docs on him of just like people being like, that was such a, that was not, he did like, not. I, yeah, yeah, against not, every morsel so in his body. <laughs> totally. Um, but yeah, the doors. Um, yeah, the, the doors and Elliot Smith. Um, we did them for their birthdays. Um, so that's for, cool. Yeah, it's clear. Happy birthday, Elliot! And happy birthday, Jim! I did that with my um, one of my collaborators, Eduardo Rivera, who um, who uh, wrote the guitar for a lot of the songs in a, in my two albums, and mm -hmm. um, Eddie and I we're having fun learning uh the producers in ourselves and we started co-producing a lot of our um our original music and we had all the tools and uh with our first record deal we got like a bunch of gear and eduardo also does scoring he's extremely talented. oh wow yeah so the, um so yeah those albums were, were a fun way for us to stay busy and have fun and reimagine these songs that we loved um the artists were specific to um art that both meant something to us mm -hmm. um, and also something that kind of felt ta tackleable um there were so many brush strokes in a lot of the doors songs that we were like okay let's eliminate and have fun um i think one of my favorite ones uh, was needle in the hay um the kind of spastic drumming on that i we got this guy um tom carroll in and I had so many ideas for that. And then also um, our lo Lovey Madly, we went for like a Tarantino um, and like really pulled out and, you know, mm -hmm. but it's just fun. It's just fun. I love, I love producing music and um, yeah. We I mean, you're, you're, you're so good at like having that like harder, like rockish sound and then doing something like super straight back. I feel like, I mean, like if, like the the cure cover you do where it's just piano and your voice and it's just like so like it's it's it makes it just like such a sad kind of like somber song and it's so good um Thank you so much. And yeah research you did a good job adam 
Oh, thank you. Um, I think like I mean that's one of my favorite records ever. That the that Cure album. Yeah. Um. So like when I heard that, and then I I didn't realize that it was on that show. I watched that show. Uh, the fire little little, little fires, fires everywhere. everywhere. Yeah. So it was in that show at some. Was it? Yeah. yeah so I played I, in like a part where like everything was falling apart. And okay. Amazing. I'd have to go back. I thought that was such a. I love Reese Witherspoon, and I just thought it was such a cool you know, thing. And then I saw that I was in it and then I listened to it. And I'm like, okay, I can remember this being in it at some point, like yeah. after I kind of put it all together. It's at the very end of episode seven, I believe that was a really special um, thing for me to be a part of. It was, um, Were you asked to do that cover or did you already have yeah. that done? Oh, wow. Yeah, so, um, so is a, uh, is a Summers. She uh, is a machine Summers. She is the machine of Florence and the machine is it did um, some, um, co-scoring and, and, and um, it, um, I'm not going to know the terminology, just like was a part of at home music supervision of that, um, of that season. Mm -hmm. And um, she is a pal of mine and the music supervisors were kind of following this. Um, they were doing like throwback songs with like new, voices that had texture to them and Izzo was like I know of some well-known artist and I came in and we did um I came in like a day later because tv is so funny like that they're like hey, are you from you uh two minutes ago and I'm like of course I am <laughs> whereas <laughs> music's like we write a song and then we're happy it's, it's like you get to tour that feeling and that emotion of the song two years later right 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 um I love tv I'm I like to work fast um but but yeah, I came in like like two days later and um, it's very emotional for me. Um, person playing the piano, everyone was a part of the show in some way and then the music supervision portion of it. Um, Izzo was there. There were three other women there um, who were, you know, it was beautiful because of that. I'd never been in a studio with all women. Um, that song means a lot to me. It makes me feel like I'm in my dad's Camaro and I'm five and he's making me listen to this album <laughs> and I want to listen to Spice Girls, but I'm having to listen to this and now I'm thankful. Um, so that was like a nice full circle. And it was great to be like, do you know this song? And I'm like, yes. Cause a lot of times when, or I guess in the past, they're like, Hey, can you come and sing this song? And it's a top 40 song. And I'm, I'm, I don't stay well versed. Mm -hmm. Um, because I don't know, I just don't naturally like I'm not naturally attracted to new pop, but I'm getting better. <laughs> <laughs> and it was just beautiful. And I remember it was they were really feeling it and I was really feeling it. And there were I my eyes were, were crying. Like I wasn't sad, but Yeah. But we did like two takes, dude. Like and it was done. Oh, wow. I think that maybe she went back in and she I like I was in an ISO booth and she was doing mm -hmm. the piano. So like I think she may have done like a um, played with the piano maybe and like after I left, but did like two takes was there for like 40 minutes, an hour. Gee, wow. I was there. I, we spent I spent more time like thanking them and chatting with them and then I did even singing. Singing the song. Wow. Yeah, you did you pull like emotion from that song that I I mean that. I was crying in the booth. I, I mean, the, the disintegration album see. itself is like one of the most depressing <laughs> albums ever, but it's such a good record. It's, I mean, one of my favorite albums of all time. And then to hear that version of it, I was like, "Damn!" Like you did it just as I was really, Thank really you. impressed by it. Um, so. Yeah, of course. Uh, well, I want to talk to you about the new EP. I love the. I, I I was just listening to. It. I love the riff and the first song. Uh, just like the, do, 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 do. yeah yeah it's so good um tell me about the the ep um cool so um in 2020 i wrote like some i wrote a batch of songs with a guitarist named andrew martin super talented andrew berkeley martin he can be searched um by that by his full name and um the producer was matt pauling um, and Matt Pauling also did some extra instrumental stuff on that. In um, in Mind's Eye, he did the strings. And oh, wow. The three of us just had so much fun. Andrew and I wrote about, uh, we wrote like seven-ish songs, and we brought four of them 
to Matt. Um, it was like June of 2020. Again, like it's always like that's how it is with music. Um, we all, all of our tours got canceled and we were just like, yay, we can like super group our dream. We can <laughs> yeah. make music. We don't have the time. And, um, and then at the time, Matt was living with Ashton Irwin, the drummer for Five Seconds of Summer. And so another song I'm going to be releasing in, um, in the new year. Um, it's called Love Beat. So Ashton was on that. And wow. the, the other two, yeah, the, those Messiah and Mind's Eye that are on the EP with three other ones. It was, it was the four of us just having like so much fun, um, not having any time restraints. And, and then the middle track, Suburban Ego. And this is so me of me because I do have these like introspective, you know, by roots and by definition, you know, folklore storytelling, folk songs. And mm -hmm. then I'm just like, I got my glam rock, rock and roll side, maniacal um, front woman, put the guitar down, give me a wireless microphone and I'm in my channel. Mm -hmm. um, and that's just always how I'm going to be. I like tried to decide at one point and then now it's so nice. Um, I digress, but I'm, I'm, I just signed with a label, uh, Vero. Mm -hmm. and it's been like six months in and they're just so supportive and they love that duality and they love both sides of me and that feels so validating um and i think it's um the ep and the songs that we chose because right now 2020 i wrote those songs and recorded them 2021 i recorded and wrote like another 11 um, and recorded them with claire morrison of horizon sounds in west hollywood and Suburban Ego is one of those songs. And um, the choice of the songs on this EP is um, indicative of the, um, the support and the real kind of seeing that I'm all emotional that I'm getting from this label. Yeah, mm -hmm. um, it's, it's so nice. They're like, so, so I'm also writing and recording. I'm going to the studio after this podcast. Um, oh, wow. But yeah, I'm just continuing to write and record and just kind of throwing it in this sacred Google Drive. Um, and we have so much to pick from to release next year. I'm so glad that you like this EP because there's a lot to pick from right now. And it's mm -hmm. been fun kind of doing like the singles game and the EP game and mm -hmm. seeing where the songs take us and seeing what my supporters and what the listeners want to hear next. If it's like, you know, do they want something softer? Do they want something harder? Do they want some rompy or thrashy? We got it. It's it's all it's got all it all. Google Doc. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Yeah, the the riff in Mind's Eyes is cool too. The the Andrew just the intro. So yeah, special. that's a killer riff. Yeah, yeah. And like when I'm writing with Andrew, it's like, so he was in a band called Moon Honey, and um, our band. The name sounds like, familiar. They Maybe. were they 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 performed. Um, they were banned for quite some time. Okay. Um, Andrew now plays in a band called Palais Royale. Oh yeah, I know who they are. Yeah. Not personally, but I know the band. Yeah, he's a member of Palais. Um, and has wow, they just band. did a big tour with Mod Son. Yeah, they did. Yeah. Um, yeah, Andrew's killing it. But um, yeah, I met I met Andrew. Our, both our bands were Moon Honey and and my band. We were playing around LA and we just kind of fell in m Muse sibling love with each other and um it was a long time coming being able to do those songs and i think the i i think they quite frankly i think they fucking rip and i think it's um i think it's just it was like four years of like pent up us jamming mm -hmm. and and being like one day and we had he he's really fun and, and he's he's really it's such a pillar of like the the rock, the east east LA rock community. Like Andrew's put together shows at like Harvard and Stone, like where it's all Bowie and Zeppelin, mm -hmm. and Stones, um, like covers for like New Year's and and Halloween. We did something at like Tay, the French restaurant, like a, and so we've been on stage together, and so it's like that mixed with just like, yeah, I I I'm so excited to share the other one, and I'm excited that you like Mind's Eye and. Yeah, it's a it's a great yeah it's a great EP and I appreciate you 
doing this today. Um, yeah. You're doing a tour. I just saw you, you're, you're going to Europe, right? You just announced yeah. a tour. Yeah. That'll be exciting. Lighting, Europe, UK. I haven't been over there since mm, 20, uh, winter of 2019. So very wow. excited to get back over there. Give everybody hugs. Second rip. <laughs> I love it. Well, thank yeah. you so much, Lauren, for doing this. Um, I love your wall too behind you. Thank the you. colors. Is that just so paint or is it wallpaper? I, paint, I painted it. It looks beautiful. I think it's rad. And I love the different size lines. I think it's cool. Um hey, <laughs> yeah. uh, well, thank you. Yeah, it's it's rad. Um, my last question is I want to know if you have any advice for aspiring artists. Mm. You have to be your biggest fan. As long as you like what you're doing, the validation will come and and the um, and the success will come, however that is, whatever kind of validation or success, just be your biggest fan, do it for the right reasons. Find your message, find your message. Yeah. I love it. Mm -hmm.